Hi guys, and welcome to another installment of Soda 360, my quick video series on learning summits on the air. In this episode, it's going to be pretty short, hopefully, um, but I wanted to show you a tip that I have for improving the copy speed for call signs in CW. So, let's get started. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Yep, you heard me right. I'm going to teach you how to improve the copy speed in CW or Morse code. Now, I'm probably the last guy you want to listen to when it comes to learning CW. There's a lot of great options out there. Um, code Academy, um, uh, Long Island, uh, CW Club, etc. But um, today what I'm going to do is just show you how I improve my copy speed for call signs. This is really important for someone that's on the air if you want to use Morse code. You probably want to use Morse code because you can carry lighter gear, run 5 watts and go a lot farther with CW because the signal to noise ratio is a lot better. Um, and you can go a lot farther in just half a watt. It's amazing and a lot of fun. Certainly frustrating to learn, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. So. Um, what I'm going to go through is just show you how I improved my copy speed for call signs. Um, certainly that doesn't help you for a rag tube, but in summits on the air, what you need to be able to do is copy the other person's call sign and a pile up. It really gets hard. Um, what you can do is um, copy down a letter, send a question mark, get the next letter, etc. until you get them all. I've done that before, but it's not certainly not as fun as being able to get it through on the first pass. So, um, once you get the person's call sign in your logbook, you need to be able to send it back to them with their signal report, and then they'll send you your signal report, and then you're pretty much done. Um, there might be a hi in there, there might be a hi Chris, there might be a GM for good morning, and certainly you're going to be seven, sending a 73, but it's a really easy way to kind of start um, with CW and get on the air. And it's a lot of fun. So. Um, let's get started. All right, the tools we're going to use is LCWO. It's one of those on the internet that's pretty handy. I've used it quite a bit, but for this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to use it to help to learn um, call signs. They do have a call sign training in here. The only downside is it gives you every possible call sign that you might hear from around the world. When you're doing summits on the air and you're just learning, you're probably not going to hear all these crazy call signs. There you're going to get a bunch of ones that start with K and W and V if you're in North America. And what you want to do is get a list of call signs to practice on that you're most likely to hear. So let's reduce the complexity and the scope of call signs that you're going to start out learning to get the highest possible success as soon as possible. So what I did is I is I got a list of call signs that I'm most likely heard, will hear. And what I did is I started pulling those from other people's logs on SOTA data. You can do that. It's all public information. Um, I used a friend of mine, K6ARK Adam, and then I have my own kind of listing. I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, the next tool we'll use is Google Spreadsheets. Here's my practice log sheet. You can make your own. Or I'll put a link to this one in the, in the notes so you can basically do what I do. Um, so let's go to the SOTA database. And what I did is I go to the top here. I choose View Results, My Results down here, and you'll see My Activator Log. So I'm going to go to My Activator Log. Uh, let's go to the one on Mount Sawyer. So I'm going to download that. There's only, it looks like, uh, ooh, let's go East Tonga Ridge because there's only four there. Now, ignore the fact, I'm going to bring up Excel, ignore the fact that some of these are FM, um, and probably you may not hear these, but even the guys working you on sideband, a lot of those guys will work you on um, CW. Uh, w0 MNA Gary is a perfect example of one of those operators. So um, 
here we go with it's just a soda data file and all we need to do is pull down their call signs and I'm going to stick a space in them so I'm going to copy it to a text pad you can use notepad I use text pad and I'm just going to put a space in between each one of these and then I'm going to copy them to a spreadsheet and you'll notice that I put a space in between each one of them so when I paste them in there's a space in between and I'll show you why and I'm gonna go skip a column and then do it again there we go so we've just started our practice call um, log um, now what I'm going to do is take this log I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it into um, LCWO learn CW online I'm gonna to go to the convert text to CW now a couple of words on this screen the first thing is the character speed if you're using Farnsworth which I highly recommend which is the character speed is always the same what you do is you increase the spacing between each letter so I'm gonna leave mine at something a little bit faster than five because it's kind of painful for me uh, at this point I'm happy to say I'm gonna paste those call signs in there now you'll see what it did is it probably stuck in a couple of tabs in here I can use this big spreadsheet that I have over and over and over now I'm going to convert that and now what I'm going to do is play it now this is the important part when I press play what you're gonna do is it what you're gonna hear is the call sign twice what's cool about this is if you don't get it on the first time you might get it the second time if you don't that's okay just, just skip it and move on but it's when you start getting better what's cool is the second time you get it is just a double check so some call signs you get screwed up on and you'll need that second chance a lot of times operators will send their call to you again they'll send it twice certainly if they send it and you go KV question mark they'll send their call once or twice more for you so let's press play and so you can see how this works here it comes again k6 hpx now so there's a reason for we skip a row so that it gives us a little bit of spacing between each call sign so you're just not getting hammered 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 um, that space or the column that we put in there between the um, call signs right here excuse me getting all screwed up this space gives us a little bit of space between call signs so it doesn't ram them down your throat super fast and you'll notice it gave us a nice long pause between this call sign and this call sign so by doing this over and over and over with a different set so what I typically did is I'd copy this to a notepad I'd have about 20 or, or so at a time and I would do it again and then I would get a brand new set from here and I'd copy about 20 of those so I'm just gonna go in here I'm gonna go to LCWO I'm just gonna go back I'm gonna highlight this and just paste in a new set convert and I'm good to go and as you get better you can improve your um, copy speed and get it up to about 20 if you can get to 20 and you can trust me if I can do it anybody can do it you're probably good to go so let's convert that and I'll let you hear how that sounds so you can tell there's a little bit less space between each character um, again some of us on the air and um, uh, operators uh, activators and chasers um, typically don't you know run 30 words a minute some of those guys do but most chasers when they hear you calling CQ and they hear you calling with big spacing they're gonna send back to you and uh, with big spacing if you keep sending a question mark they typically will slow down um, chasers are awesome so there you go that's all there is to it um, 
so what I used um, LCWO and a little bit of, of my own working to use their text to CW conversion. Um, I started out really slow, probably around five words a minute spacing wise. So using the Farnsworth method, as I got better, I lowered the spacing by increasing that effective uh, word count speed. So um, that really, really helped me. It helped me build the confidence that I needed to go out there and spot myself. And I've been having a great time ever since. Certainly, the more you do summits on the air using CW, the better you'll get. But hopefully, this will help you build that confidence and get out there and start using CW. You'll find that most operators don't come, come at you with 30, 40 words a minute. If they try to do that, just keep sending question marks or ignore them. I got to tell you that 99.9% .9 of all chasers will always slow down. And they typically, when they hear you going with big spacing, when they hear you send with big spacing between your characters, they know I chase and I can tell that, hey, this is another guy who's just like me. He's trying to learn. So I don't ram a whole bunch of CW down his throat. I send with a little bit of extra space than I normally do uh, for him or her. And um, it works out for everybody because chasers need the uh, points as well as the activators. I hope this helped you. Um, if so, give it a like um, and a uh, subscribe to the channel because that makes my ego get bigger. But more importantly, leave me a comment and tell me what you thought. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Soda360, my learning series on how to do summits on the air. You can always get back to the series on YouTube by going to hamninja.com slash SOTA360. In addition, if you want to learn or read about some of the other tips that I've learned on my own and from others that have helped me a lot on my CW learning journey, go to hamninja.com slash CW and check it out. 73 guys.